Hello, this is Valerie from Shalebrook Handcrafted Soap in Moser River, Nova Scotia. And today I'm going to be doing a low temperature hot process in the crock pot. It's a banana soap. And uh, so I have all my oils in here, my hard oils, and I'll give you the formula for this after too. Um, I have oatmeal going in it, oatmeal that I cooked and strained. And I have banana and aloe vera gel. Uh, probably a medium sized banana pureed. So right now, uh, before I add my lye, I'm gonna mix these in and puree them up. Not puree them up, but stick blend them up in there. I'll just show you how I, banana is just phenomenal for soaps, for lather and good for your skin. It, it will turn it brown, but um, just a light brown depending on what else you add. So there's my cooked strained oatmeal going in, my pureed banana with my aloe vera gel, freshly done from my niece's aloe vera plant. banana you want to make sure that there's no pieces of banana left in it that it's completely pureed and I'm also going to add uh, I'm going to add I have four ounces of coconut milk going in this and I'm going to add two ounces of it now and I'm adding that heated up taping by myself today so probably going to be kind of awkward but uh, because this is low temperature it's going to be a slow cook and uh, I'll shut the camera off so you don't have to go through that so this is um, my lye liquid you'll see it's quite dark it consists of chamomile tea and I put 5% sodium lactate in there as well liquid uh, sodium lactate there's some, uh, there's about a teaspoon of salt in there. And uh, this will get thick probably fairly quickly because uh, there's stearic acid in it. See that getting thick already?
So you can see how thick that is in the color, and that will probably get even browner. And um, what I'm going to do right now is, uh, where it's thick trace, I'm going to cover that up with some plastic wrap, plus the crop cover. And uh, this is cooking on low temperature. Uh, when I started this, the oils were about 150, uh, 145, and the lye was about 125. So I'm just going to shut the camera off, and uh, I'm going to time it for 15 minutes. If something happens before then, I'll come back and show you. Okay, so it's only been about five or six minutes and uh, usually I let my low temperature hot process fold over on itself but this is starting to rise up and and touch that plastic wrap so I'm just gonna stir that down make sure that you're wearing your gloves um, maybe because of the stearic acid maybe because the oils were at 145 instead of about 125 I've also found that uh, when I use oatmeal, cooked strained oatmeal in soaps, it, it seems to cook it faster. But you'll see the color of that there. And uh, that's actually almost Vaseline stage, which uh, really not a slow cook. But I'm going to put that back on for about uh, probably five more minutes I think and I'll check the pH just to see where we're at so you can see right there that there's a piece of uh, unsaponified oils and butters right there hopefully you can see that so it still has to cook and uh, I was hoping that this would be a slow cook so I could show you what you could do with it but uh, so we'll see in five minutes and I'm going to shut that camera off again and I'll bring you back. I'm going to cover it back over with the plastic wrap and I've turned my crock pot to warm. It was on low. you're using plastic wrap, try to make sure that it just gets on that adobe part because it can melt onto your crock pot depending on how hot it is. Okay, so we'll be back. Okay, so I timed that soap so it ended up being exactly 15 minutes. Um, and I turned my crock pot on warm and I timed it for 10 more minutes, so it's been 15 minutes. And I checked the pH on that, and the pH is good to go, and I also checked at the zap. So I'm gonna add the rest of my stuff to this now. I'm gonna take it out of the crock because it doesn't need any more heat. And um, I'm gonna add my additives. And uh, I super fatted this up front at uh, 5% super fat, and I'm adding an extra 3% super fat to this. And it consists of uh, mango butter, meadow foam oil, and apricot kernel oil. And I'm going to stir that all in. And you can see that that's translucent there. It's that Vaseline type. So actually it takes, it usually takes 20, 25 minutes to do a low temperature three pound soap. But the stearic acid does help cook it faster. And I found oatmeal does as well. And your formula, the other oils and butters that you have in there. Okay. I 
also have three tablespoons of sugar mixed with two tablespoons of water. And that's heated up. And I have my other two ounces of coconut milk. So you can see that this is uh, pretty brown. Actually, what I'm going to do with that is... Uh, hope I have that set right, that camera. I'm going to use my whisk for this. I usually try to be really careful with my coconut milk. There's no sugar in this coconut milk that I use. But I've had it before where I've added it and I didn't stir it good enough and that because the crock pot was hot, it actually cooked the coconut milk. And I ended up digging out pieces of coconut milk that were hard. And I don't want that to happen again. That was actually not a very pleasant experience. <laughs> Anyway, I did finally get it all out, but it's just not worth it. I don't know if you've ever tried um, banana and soap before, but it uh, adds an incredible feeling to it and, and lather to it as well. Now I'm going to add my um, yogurt. And I did my yogurt at a heaping tablespoon, it's a round lap, like a heaping tablespoon or a well-rounded tablespoon. And uh, you can whisk that in, stir it in. Just make sure you get it all, blend it really well because you don't want that yogurt to cook in the hot batter. Uh, the only thing I have left to put in that batter is I'm adding two tablespoons of raw honey. But I'm going to just uh, let that yogurt set in there for about another five to seven minutes. And then we'll come back and finish the soap off. And I'm just going to turn the camera off for that. So here we are back. And um, that was about seven minutes. And I'm going to add my two tablespoons of raw honey. The two tablespoons of raw honey I mixed with a tablespoon of water. And I do not discount my sodium lactate or my sugar or my honey. that up really well. You can see how dark that batter is, so I'm not sure how my color scheme is going to work with this. I actually had planned on putting in an essential oil blend of benzoin and lemon and some black pepper. And that was, I had it all mixed up and it's a beautiful smell. But this batter has a really nice 
it has a really nice um, earthy homey goodness smell to it so I actually don't think I'm going to add any fragrance oil to that so you can see that that's pretty soupy there and um, I'm gonna bring over my colors and I'm gonna divide that batter up so here's my pictures and uh, my color scheme is going to be like a yellow with um, a not a seed powder seed buckthorn powder an orange peel powder and this will be activated charcoal and then I'll use a natural the natural color as well not looking to have that black 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 so I didn't want it to be brown so I think that's good cover that up So I hope you catch that, me pouring that. And uh, I have two teaspoons of kale and clay. I'm going to try to lighten this up some before I add the... Uh, the other stuff to it. I prob you probably won't even notice this in there. Should have maybe used some zinc oxide is another thing that you could have used. There's some kale and clay that didn't get mixed up. And you don't have to worry about me sticking my hands in that batter. There's no lye left in it. It's all been saponified. I might pour some of that out, I'm thinking. But 
Okay. And I'm not looking to get a bright yellow from this because the batter's so dark. And I have some more natto seed there. I'm going to... Yeah, that's not too... It's not doing too much, is it? might not work. Anyway, I'm going to pour this anatto seed through the Kleenex because I don't want any scratchy anatto seed powder in there, or speckles, I should say. When your soap hardens and dries, it will lighten up a bit as well. So this is a really good lesson for me, and I, I learned it, is that, you know, you're not always going to get what you want or what you're looking for, but try to make sure that your soap is a beautiful soap. That's the main thing. Okay, so I think I'm just going to go with that because I don't really have time with the video to mix up any more. So let's see how this looks. floor. See, this batter smells so good. Makes me want to eat it like oatmeal. This is one of those soaps that <laughs> it's certainly not what I had envisioned, that's for sure. But that's all right. And I could actually did a drop swirl with this batter today. It's so nice.
tap that down a bit. I really don't have much of a swirl planned. I'm just uh, going to go up and down with it. Probably shouldn't have did that. Up and down, and then I did a circle. Well, we'll see when that comes out what that's going to look like. And uh, what I will do is uh, once I have this done, this will go in the freezer for for about um, six hours. And I'll take it out and put it in uh, the fridge. Okay. I'll show you the cut regardless of what it looks like and I'll show you the lather off that puck as well when I get it going. So thank you for joining me today from Shellbrook Handcrafted Soap in Moser River, Nova Scotia. Bye for now. This is the leftover soap from the banana oatmeal goat milk that I did with the aloe vera gel and I just actually just wanted to show you what the lather was like on that. Real dense. Real silky. Just a lovely dense, thick, moisturizing lather. And that was off of just a tiny bit of soap from the puck there. You can see how thick that is. Thick and dense and beautiful. So good for your skin.